hello everyone and welcome to a very special point in progress dev talk i think this is the first of its kind and uh this is gonna be a good one so i'm very excited for everyone here uh i'm of course mario rivera i'm joined by my lovely co-host over there at point in progress uh sly clone mc sly how are you doing i am doing great hopefully first many of yes. these hip dev talks very exciting yeah very very exciting and of course today we have a very special guest i actually have seen him uh, quite a bit uh in the chat rooms <laughs> of different podcast hosts uh and websites <laughs> but uh it's very nice to finally meet uh uh graham reed how are you doing also known as uh graham of legend what's going on how are you doing that's good that's good i'm good thanks for thanks for having me here oh again i'm excited you. I'm excited to talk about your game, uh, which we um, both me and Sly got a chance to play. Of course, we're talking today, uh, Super Space Club. Awesome! Congratulations on the launch. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh man, uh, I got finally. <laughs> finally, has, has it been a process? Like, how long have you? How long has this project been going on for you? Yeah, it's it's been a process. Um, I started in 2019. So long. It feels like, especially after the pandemic, it feels yeah. like forever ago. But I've only worked on it on and off for like eight months ish. Okay. So it's been four years in the making, but only eight months of work. I see. I see. Okay. So that feels extra long to me. Yeah. Okay. If you can, Graham, just go ahead and tell everybody uh, who you are, what you've been doing. Obviously, obviously working on this game. But where where, where is some of your history from? Of course. So my name is Graham Reed, also known as Graham of Legend, and I'm a Jamaican indie game developer. Like born and raised from not Jamaica Queens, like actual Jamaica. <laughs> <laughs> um, currently in New York though. That's why I, I have to specify every time because people will think I mean from Queens. Um, and yeah, I I've been on this game dev journey. It feels like for like a decade now, even though I haven't released that many things because I've been working at like tech jobs. I've been working in motion graphics, and then this game dev has always been my side thing up until. 2021, where I left my last job. I worked. I used to work at Snapchat. I left Snapchat to mm. just do the full time game dev thing, which has been, been dope. Oh, okay. Are you, are you responsible for all the fil filters that uh, that I would have to send and send the people in there in my Snapchats? Is that? <laughs> uh, yes and no. <laughs> <laughs> the, the the not the not the face filters. Those are called lenses. So not those, but like the ones we swipe through and it says like your the location or has some fun thing. Got I used it. to work on those for a while. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> That's so awesome. Cool. And a bunch of other, bunch of other things. <laughs> okay. And then, of course, uh, th this this is technically this is not the first game that you worked on. You worked on a couple games beforehand, uh, of course. Uh, yeah, I, yeah. I worked on is... two mobile games before. Yeah, and and I actually we have funny enough, uh, Sly. I want to give this section to you, of course, because <laughs> Sly is a huge fan of Hecatube. <laughs> Yeah, I am. No, yeah, really? I, <laughs> absolutely. I was telling Mario this story before what? we started, but um, I I played so much Hectic Cube. I'm pretty sure um, I saw it like mentioned in like a kind of funny games chat, something, whatever. Uh, but Maybe. I played <laughs> so much of that like in high school. I remember being on the bus to like swim meets in and like playing school. it on my phone. Um, when did you so play this? I... <laughs> like when it came out? Uh, yeah, to, like to, to preface, Sly is very young. 17. I yeah, I have a child. <laughs> College child. College child. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, that's amazing though, thank you. Like I wouldn't I was not expecting that at all. Wow. No, well, that's awesome. But of course that uh, leads us then to today, that which of course day. we're gonna be talking <laughs> No, I'm glad. I'm glad that made your day. Uh I don't care about Suicide Sono. Let's talk about Hectic. <laughs> <laughs> well, well that was go. gonna be my one uh like gotcha question at the end was like what what does a guy gotta do to get that supported on iOS again? <laughs> Tell Apple to stop being a bitch. <laughs> I'm, no, Apple, they, they... I'm joking, Apple, please let me put stuff on your platform. <laughs> no, it's just, <laughs> it's hard because with mobile, both Apple and, and Google, it's like they want you to keep your things updated forever and ever. Aim. And like with Steam, you can put that game on there and you, you, you'll see games from like mm -hmm. 20, not even 20, from like 2009 or something, you know? And it has been updated since 2009. But with, with mobile, if you don't keep it updated, they're just going to kick things off, no matter who you are. Like, you can't get the original Ridiculous Fishing, I think, on the Play Store anymore, which sucks. 
but then they made the EX of course, which is also one of my favorite games. <laughs> um, but yeah, so it's just a matter of me updating it, which is not. I don't want to. That's <laughs> for sure. Yeah. I don't know if I can find that project anymore. To be honest, like I, I need to remake it and do like a Hectic Cube EX. <laughs> That's right. The 4K edition, and then just make it yeah. vertical, so then we can fit on the scene. Super deck. Hectic Cube. That's, That's it. Super yeah. Hectic Cube. Perfect. We did it. There you go. Next project. Next project. Super <laughs> Hectic Cube. Hectic Cubed. You know, there's so many names. <laughs> <laughs> with this, yeah, with the little square. Yeah, 100. percent With the little three, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's perfect. Okay, okay. Uh, well, of course. Then today we're we're obviously talking about Super Space Club. Uh, can you possibly give us sort of just what is Super Space Club? What 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 came to that project for you? Of course. So Super Space Club is the dopest arcade space shooter you'll play today. The best soundtrack in 2023, hands down. No, no competition. <laughs> um, sure. Yeah, it's just a really chill, yet hectic, hectic, like hectic arcade shooter. Um, very vibrant color space, lo-fi beats to chill to with actual vocal, actual vocal tracks from artists around the world. And yeah, this is just something you, you should definitely try. Oh, for sure. Uh, I, I, of course, uh, have been lucky for you. Uh, you you've uh, provided me with the code. I, of course, passed that code on to Superfan Sly mm -hmm. so they, they could try it. And then I purchased the game <laughs> so that way we could talk yeah, about it. Like, you. If oh. I knew, I'd have sent you two codes. But I mean, well, you know, I always appreciate I mean, the, the, the I'm, I'm, I need the review. Not the, the reviews are very important. So if, you, oh, if you're listening and you buy the game, please review it. <laughs> Yeah, write a review and then wish list as well. If you're if you're able to buy it, just so that way people Go wish list, write a review to all the all the things. No, yeah, for sure, yeah. for sure. Um, again, what? So I noticed this obviously from Hypercube and then from this, you're very much seemingly inspired by classic archetypes of like arcade games and stuff like. Uh, in this game, I feel a lot of Asteroid influence. I think of some other people have also mentioned mm -hmm. Asteroid influence. What draws you to that sort of that that? that that type of gameplay it's a mix of me just enjoying that kind of gameplay like i just love those those kind of games like um the like host mark games mm -hmm. those are mm -hmm. some of my favorite games like super stardust hd even return like up to like all of them just have this really cool very tight mechanically gameplay awesome sauce <laughs> <laughs> and i just and I, it's also fun to make games like that okay. but then also, I, I'm not a programmer by trade. Like, I just kind of learned on YouTube. Sure. And so it's like, what can I make this easy? Easy, quote unquote. You know, like, what, what, what's, what's within my beginner skill set? And then how can I make it as beautiful and as polished as possible to make it feel like my own thing? And that, that's how I ended up with Hectic U, with, with Shapes and Sound, the first game, and with Super Space Club. Yeah. Yeah. It very much takes that those that those original gameplay elements and then elevates it with sort of yeah like the cool sort of low finess of just like the lights and the colors that you you combine with your 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 standard elements. I think that's really really cool. What what right. was the idea of combining both sort of like in, in my way in a lot of ways it's asteroids and like Galaga where it's sort of like it is the format of asteroids, but it's the wave basedness of like having to take out ships and stuff like that, almost like a top down uh, uh, Star Fox <laughs> in a way. What what made you want to make that the concept? I mean, for this you game? nailed all the references. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you, you nailed it. Like I so I. I also loved even like Geometry, I was like all those games, but I didn't want to make a twin stick shooter. I wanted to make something that was really momentum, like physics based. Yes. Um, and yeah, so I was like, oh, Asteroids is the obvious call, call back there. But I didn't really want to just make a rock shooter, does make any sense. Not, not, not in 2023, you know, like, or 2019 when I started. So it was like, how can I make this cool, just add different kind of enemies? Um, and Star Fox was, a, was an influence too, just because of all the anthropomorphic heroes, like, Loki, if someone at Nintendo is listening to this, give me. It's flying in there. Sorry, <laughs> if if Nintendo <laughs> listening, give me give me Star Fox or give me not so, give me, give me Slippy. I want Slippy in the game. That'd be a fun fun ability. Slippy Toad content. When, let's go. When you, <laughs> and, uh, it gets ported off to Switch. Yeah, absolutely. Slippy Toad is a playable character. Exactly. Yeah. 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 It's exclusive. I make it happen. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, come on, Nintendo. Um, but yeah, so it's it's just a. Just those things all came together to make Super Space Club because I wanted to make it something something dope, you know. Like, and of course, my other big inspiration is Luftrausers. 
if you played that from Lambert. No. So it's, it's, it, oh, you should, you should play it. It's, okay. it's a lot harder than Super Space Club, but it's, it's, like, <laughs> it's like Super Space Club, but in like World War II, essentially. Okay. All right. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really good. Okay. So I see Wait, you have a couple questions. What was, yeah. yeah, what was the process like for designing like the orders of each waves and how they escalate? I feel like it has a very like seamless progression. What was what was that like for you? It took so long. <laughs> 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 so like what I what I learned from making this game specifically is it's very easy to make content. So like making all the different weapons and abilities and stuff. The longest one probably took me like a couple of days, but then balancing them just took so long, <laughs> took so long to do and just making everything feel right. You know? So when it started, there weren't even waves. It was just, I kind of had it set up where you just played and things just progressively got harder and harder. But then something up at some point, the waves just kind of made sense. It just clicked to me. And I think eventually what I landed on was having new enemies introduced in each wave. And it's legit, I have like an actual difficulty curve. Mm. And it's kind of just tweak it to make it feel right. And every every time I play it, just tweak it some more, tweak it some more. Same thing with how hard the enemies hit, how much life they have. And it's just been a big balancing game. <laughs> 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 like I want to add more content to it eventually, but that's just more balancing, <laughs> more tweaking. Yeah, I mean, eventually I was actually going to ask, yeah, in terms of the way that you structure this, uh, for me, the other inspiration that, I, that when I brought it up, uh, we talked a little bit about this on our podcast, uh, has like the, the spark of obviously asteroids, but a, a little bit of vampire survivors in a way where like the waves can escalate. Yeah. And the way that you can <laughs> <laughs> change the abilities and how that could go forward. I'm like, what was some, I mean, obviously I assume you have some ideas that you would like to implement later in the game. I mean, how, how imminent would that be? If you think of like for an update, like, is it something like uh, long-term TBD. you think? <laughs> okay. I figured we were going to get an answer for that, but I forgot. Uh, no, 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 not, not TV because I, I think I want to answer. I just I have no like right now. I'm just still focus on just launching and like no, getting because the Xbox version is out. Yeah, so just doing all that. But uh not I wouldn't say far out because okay, it's just a matter of the timing really. Because I I'd love to launch it. I don't want to put it out on a random Wednesday. You know, like I want to make sure it's <laughs> like marketing. It hits a good marketing beat and it just makes sense to launch new content at whatever time. Like I don't know during during a holiday sale or. Hey, six months in, here's some updates and that kind of, that kind of thing. No, for sure. Um, but but within within the next year for sure. Like I plan to do a lot of updates. Not a lot, but I plan to do updates to it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Besides, so major part? content updates, not just regular. Oh updates. yeah. yeah. <laughs> no. Thank you for that as well. <laughs> yeah. Of course. <laughs> Uh, you, you touched on this briefly earlier, but all of your games have this like very distinctive feel and style to them that I really enjoy. Uh, but like, what drew you to developing this kind of physics-based games in this very like stylized cubic um, imagery? So you mean specifically the visuals for it? Like, why? Why has my trajectory just been very minimal, ge like geometric stuff? <laughs> uh, no, I mean, I I really enjoy them. I love it. The like, they all feel great physics Thank you. wise, and the art is very distinctive. But like, um, how did you go about like combining those into what's now a very distinctive style of yours? Gotcha. Um. I think it's similar to why I've made these kinds of games. It's just a matter of what can I do and actually execute on. <laughs> like I, I like my I feel like my artistic abilities are. I mean, the, the, don't get me wrong. I think the game looks, looks. I think I've done something nice with with Super Space Club, but I feel like my actual ability is a lot greater than what you see. But me implementing it in Unity is not. I can't, I can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> and so that, that, that's where the bottleneck has been. Um, and so it's like, oh yeah, I can make something lo-fi because if I were to make like a 3D model of some character today, it wouldn't run your computer. Like you could have a, a 50, 80 Ti, whatever 
the graphics card like <laughs> wouldn't run because I don't have to optimize anything. That's that's not my job. <laughs> no, sure. Mm-hmm. And so, especially with and with physics, it's like you have to. Physics takes up so much processing power. You have to make sure everything, everything is optimized. So I was like, all right, cool. I'm just going to push these low-fi graphics as far as I can, so that way it doesn't make the gameplay suffer at all. Um, and yeah, I think I think that's just how I end up where you, where I am right now. Do you feel like those limitations is actually what propels you to try to make the game fun in the very least? Like having to only work with this sort of uh, set of skills and, and different abilities that you can do, but somehow find the fun in that. So for instance, in this instance, it's sort of like the physics of the floating ship of like pressing the one button, but making that fun where it's like, all right, cool. I need just this amount of boost to get out of like certain things. Like how, how is it like finding that for, for this sort of skill set? And like you said, the liminal, that you, the liminal things you need in order to make it work. I mean, I don't know. Like I, I, I feel like, with that specifically, I also wanted to add my own limitations because I could have mm-hmm. utilized a whole controller. I could have made it so that you have a reverse button, you have like mm-hmm. buttons to do flips and everything. And I, I just didn't, I just wanted to make something very pure. Like if you have a three mouse, three button mouse, you can play the whole game with just, just your mouse. Like I, I really like that about the limitations. Um, but then at, at the same time, looking at the, the very simple graphics, it kind of limits me negatively. Sure. Because people look at it and think, oh, it's like a it's a cheap game. It's like low. It it looks beautiful, but it's also just it doesn't have these high fidelity graphics, and so it's not worth what whatever I say is worth, or what other people think it might be worth, you know. And so that is a like a bad limitation of it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, we'll we, we'll see where I go after this, but for now, I think I think I've I've done the best I can do with Super Space Globe. Yeah, I think just combining, like I said, the elements of just the the actual movement of the ships, uh, the way that they different interact with the physics around like the asteroids and stuff like that. I think that's it's still even if it, it looks just you know in terms of this low finest, it still adds just a lot of depth and complexity of like okay, I want to make sure that I boost at this exact moment because I know this ship does this, or when they're I get to I think wave three and I get the spinny ship that shoots out all of oh my god! But the first of all, yeah. you're a jerk for putting that in the game. Second of all. <laughs> what? <laughs> I, 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 it's, 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 as someone who doesn't play arcades uh, often, because I, I haven't been able to sit down and play with something to me that has uh, some of that feel that when I played games as a kid, and this definitely added to that. So that's why I thank you for it, but also you're a jerk because it has to rely on skills that I've lost for many years. <laughs> and I want to say I think so like funny. some of these limitations are actually adding so much value to the game like um i play mostly desktop um but i have uh, an apple computer so i'm running it on a partition and some games don't I was gonna run say, you great the game? on a partition <laughs> okay. but um super space club ran excellent for me even on like my like, hey. totally legal windows partition and the like limitation <laughs> of a nice. couple um like controls like i have a lot of like um issues with like accessibility and like coordination especially in my hands and so like just being able to focus on like one two three buttons is like makes it play really well for me and i also am not a big that's like, awesome that, so that's also why i limited it because i wanted to just be accessible mm-hmm. to to people you know like i didn't want to i personally can play these games that use every single button but i don't i didn't feel like i needed to make that this time around you know mm-hmm and it makes it more approachable for people wanting to get into these kind of games. Right. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, that's that's actually really cool. Um, also, I wanted to say that I just also just enjoy making these physics type things. I don't know why. It's just it's very fun. It's fun to play, but it's also fun to just experiment. And I think people just call it emergent gameplay. Like you just find certain like certain things just come out of me playing and testing. Mm-hmm. Just testing, 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 and then it's like, oh, when you bump into stuff, should that damage you or it shouldn't? Like when when you put on the shield, if if you hit an asteroid, it goes flying. Yes. And for for a moment, I thought about making if if things go beyond a certain speed, if they bump into you, it damages you. But I couldn't bother trying to explain that, so I didn't add it in. <laughs> but just stuff like that. It's just fun to play and like kind of let the game lead you in what it wants to be. 
Yeah, there were moments when I was playing and uh, I would put the shield on and I think I bounced the asteroid and I think it bumps into the enemies. <laughs> and, uh, I, and I was like, perfect, yeah. get away from me, pop. <laughs> Just like knock it over. <laughs> um, in terms of obviously the sort of world that the game takes place, is it does take in place in the world. It's these characters that you've created. Obviously, they're heavily inspired by, I would say, a lot of Star Fox influences. What, what was your sort of... Uh, what, what what made you want to create it in this style? Like, sort of like putting in that world other than being a massive Star Fox fan. Like, specifically the characters <laughs> themselves. Uh, so one th- one major, major thing I learned from Hector Cube was that people like characters. <laughs> <laughs> like, he was really like characters. It, it, it's a big selling point, you know? And so I could have made it so that there weren't any characters. It was just the abilities and it would have played the same but it wouldn't have the same personality. And I really wanted to add that layer of personality and just character for like, like pardon the pun, character to, for people to latch on to. Mm-hmm. And so you, you hear people like, oh yeah, I love Sasha, she's my favorite, or Gertie's a bad bitch, I love her so much, she's so sick. <laughs> like people have said that. And I'm like, oh, and this, that's awesome. This, this is exactly what I wanted. Um, and then because they're animals, I used their traits to kind of dictate what the abilities would be. Mm. So like, Xander's a pangolin, and pangolins have a very hard shell and sailor shield. Um, Roscoe's a chameleon, and uh, I was trying to think of what he did with their tongue, because, you know, they, yes. they, that's how they catch things. Mm-hmm. But then I learned, when I was researching, I learned that their eyes are always moving independently, but when they're going to actually catch their prey, they, they focus, and both eyes latch in. It's almost like they slow down time, and so that's what inspired Got that ability. Got it. Yeah, I was wondering about that. Yeah, okay. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah. There you go, yeah. You go. <laughs> um, and then I was watching Cyberpunk and I saw the the San Devis sun, like the that <laughs> the effect, and so I was like I'm I'm using that. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's how folks. it works. <laughs> Cyberpunk edge runners. Um, yeah, so all the <laughs> all the characters that that's kind of how I ba- how I end up with their abilities and how if I have an idea for ability, I think of what character or what kind of animal that would best fit, and so it just kind of back and forth process like that. And then I had a, I had a, I have a friend who did all the concept art and another guy who did the um, this actual rendering of them in the game. And they just made them sick. Like, <laughs> look, like the, I think it looks so dope. I mean, yeah, if you look at them, they're all just, they have such interesting designs. I could see, yeah. I could see the world that these characters can inhibit it and being in these different ships and stuff like that. Like, I can see this, I can see these characters living on. And that's what, that's the kind of beauty it's of awesome. the game. So, <laughs> I think it's, really it's so cool. funny because I never... Starting off, I never planned to have a big Super Space Club universe or anything. Yeah. But somehow it just kind of all came together. <laughs> <laughs> like, not everything happens to just be perfectly planned out. Like, even, I don't know if you noticed, but everything, there's, there's like a big five theme right now. Like, there are five ships, five weapons, five characters, five song, five songs. It's, everything's just five. No. But I didn't mean for it to be like that. <laughs> it's not like, oh, here's Gertie's ship and Gertie's weapon. Mm-hmm. And this is her song. It's just, no, it's just, it just happened that way. That's... <laughs> That's really cool. Uh, you bring up the music. Yeah. The music was a wonderful surprise. Um, of course, uh, done yes. by, I believe, uh, your collaborator is a Fat Bard. Is that correct? Fat yeah. Bard, yeah. yeah. Uh, so I load up the game, and that's the first thing that hits is all of a sudden I just hear this lo-fi hip hop and i'm like what's what i was you're just not expecting what? It you, you're just not expecting it when you play play a game play this game yeah. and then it hits and then you're just going and then that's where it all kind of comes in with that sort of lo-fi-ness but you say lo-fi chill some of this game is not chill I'm like, you still gotta have some accuracy well no so the vibe the vibe the vibe is chill so yes, it's, vibe is it's chill. guardians of the galaxy one where it starts out and peter quill is on some planet fighting enemies, but he's listening to like some retro eighties music. Yes. That's the vibe. It's like, oh yeah, he's actually in danger and actually in combat, but he's chilling. It's a vibe. That's awesome. And so that, that that's how that's how I wanted this to feel too. Okay. So you had a you had a question similar to this. Yeah. Yeah. The music perfectly sets the tone for the game, in my opinion. So I was curious what the collaborative process with the musicians was like to kind of craft this experience yeah so initially they didn't even have vocals there were the vocals weren't like and the like parts of the initial pitch it was just i want something lo-fi hip-hop because every everything about 
the visual and just the feel of the game. I kind of want it to be a juxtaposition to what everything else is. Like if you if you go to Steam and look up space games, they're all black and white. They're all very dark. And they all have either very ambient music or like techno or just some kind of like, you know, just very energetic, high energy kind of thing to make you feel claustrophobic. Like, oh my God, everything is important. But I didn't want any of that. I wanted to be very colorful, inspired by like um, Into the Spider-Verse. That's the first one, right? The first one, Into the Spider-Verse? Yeah, Into the Spider-Verse. Yeah, so I watched that and that's what made it. That's what I'm like, oh, I need it to be the most colorful thing ever. <laughs> um, and then... The music, I just wanted it to not feel like every other thing. I wanted it to have its own identity. Um, and again, Guardians just, inspi- just re- re- reinforced that. Um, and then, so the fat writer, like, oh yeah, we should, we should, I should experiment with adding vocals. Yeah, I think it'd be cool. And he tried it, and it was, in fact, very cool. <laughs> <laughs> and it does, it, it's, made, it's made perfect sense because I wanted to kind of. In- like inject the game with my culture and just like my interests Mm -hmm. and of course i'm from jamaica so one of the tracks has a jamaican artist on this guy named rizik um and then it's just a lot of hip-hop other than that so there's two three black american hip-hop artists on it one i want to say woman i was going to say one person from from france um yes that's all french and then the the guy from jamaica and i think that yeah, the game is just like, it doesn't look, doesn't have any black people. It doesn't have any, like, it doesn't look like anything specific. But then through the music is where I'm putting in, and through some of the texts, I'm putting in all of my culture and my love for hip hop and that kind of stuff in there. You're, you're making it universal. And that's how it just ended up being like this. Yeah. Yeah. You're making it universal by it being the sort of the space theme and everyone, you know, sort of like being able to this collaborative process of the music, the characters, like everyone's different and defined, but it's all part of this universe. I feel like that, that all connects very well with what you're, what you're sort of presenting with the game for sure. I actually had a question about the, the title super space club. Like what, what uh, <laughs> I hate it. Who came up with it? I assume you. Me, his thumb. I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta ask why. <laughs> because it's like, why did I name it the most generic Super Space Club? Like it's so so lame. Not not lame, but it's like when you look up Super Space Club, you'll find so many other Super Space whatever, and then there's also some weed thing. That's also some space thing. I'm like, oh, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which I'm there's not, nothing wrong with that, but that's not what the game is. You know, I want it to be its own identity. No, for sure. And uh, Initially, when I first had this idea, or an iteration of this idea, like 2014, back when I was still making mobile games, before Hecticube, um, just played like ridiculous fishing, and I wanted to make something similar, like, so you, you tilt your phone, and instead of fishing, you, you're flying through space, mm-hmm. um, the same kind of loop, same kind of curve loop and everything, and it was going to be called the Hyperspace Society. I think that's such a cooler name. It's so, so so much cooler. <laughs> but then the problem with that was it was too long for for Google. And so then parked that that whole idea, made Hectic Cube, went to Snapchat. And then I re- when I came back to revisit it, somehow Super Space Club is what I landed on. <laughs> honestly, and I'm just like, oh, I wouldn't, I don't want to name it that. <laughs> I, I honestly think it's a dope, I know you, you might have residents now, but I think it's a dope name because when you look at this the cast of characters and then you see sort of the space thing, like identity, it f- does feel like an intergalactic actual, it's literally a space club. It could be a club of all these different characters that come together. Well, no, that's exactly why I named it yeah. that. But just as a name of the game itself, it's like, <laughs> it, it could have been like, the game could have been named anything featuring this, the super space club, you know, like. Hey, as someone who has to share his name with Mario, having Super Mario be in there, <laughs> Being next to Super Mario is not that bad, okay? So I think that's it's a solid choice. Thank you. Thank you. Someone's got to type in Super, and it's got to show up in the results. That's all I'm going to say. So Yeah, it's, it's so many things show up. That's the problem. <laughs> no making anything Super again. Like. That is also fair. <laughs> oh, <Yeah>. man. <laughs> Sly, do you have any other additional questions that you would like to ask, Graham? 
Uh, you had one more on here that I thought was really cool. Well, yeah, I, to... I, I was just figuring if you had any additional ones before I uh, asked it. But if, if so, go I'll, for I'll, I'll go for this one. Essentially, this one had, I would say, a little bit of a push with uh, your sort of like uh, partnership with, like I think, Big Hair's uh, PR. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. So they're doing they're doing all the the PR um, for the game. How how is shout that? Mike. How's yeah? Shout out to Mike Tondra, by the way, friend of the show. Um, also, yeah, Kyle, who just yeah, uh, recently joined them, so that's awesome. Uh, what yeah, was yeah, yeah, yeah. Also joined them. So cool. He, I love that yeah. boy. Uh, text him every now and then. I miss that guy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> in terms of obviously coming from development, d- deciding like this is the game that I want to make, the process of making it. What was that process like of starting that process? But then going into like, okay, we're now into the release part of this and beginning those connections with like Vicarious and stuff like that. Like, how does someone who is just developing their game begins that process, if you could possibly answer? It's a very big question. It's a very big question. <laughs> um, and tackle it any direction you it's, want. It's, it's the short answer is like a, a mix of just networking okay. and having money slash getting funding so that you can afford these things <laughs> because PR is not cheap. <laughs> not marketing is not cheap. Like none of it's cheap. Like even porting, if you want to, I'm, I'm doing all the port myself, the port to Xbox, but if you want to get a porting host, I, from what I've heard from other people, it's like 20,000 per port, which is a lot of money. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and I'm not, I'm not breaking the NDAs because I, I don't personally know myself, but that's what I've heard. And it's just <laughs> that's fair. money. <laughs> that's, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. quite a bit. Um, so all these things, so if, if you do, the, so networking is putting yourself on, on, on socials and everything that will get good good feedback for your game, good and visibility on the game, I should say. And then that's when you people are actually interested to give you money so that you can like actually not even finish it because all the money I've gotten for for funding it's mostly gone into like the marketing gone into the pr stuff gone into the random things like localization mm-hmm. that all these things people don't think about that that's where those are things that actually cost the most money i see i see yeah for sure. yeah yeah how, how also is it to and so uh, don't please don't don't shit on any games that don't have all these things because it's not cheap <laughs> That's, we're trying that's sure. the, that's the yeah. thing that people yeah that they just don't realize that there's a lot that goes on so when people are just being <laughs> unseriously yeah. mean it's like there was a lot of effort that was put into doing even the littlest things it's not easy yeah, yeah. <laughs> i have a it's friend who released a game happen. and he didn't have certain things in his settings and it's like like i don't know what he didn't have he didn't have like for example a full screen toggle some, something small like that that could be fixed mm-hmm. overnight and people were review bomb- bombing in. I'm like, no, don't, don't do that. <laughs> like, you know how much work he puts into this game? And you're complaining because he doesn't have one little toggle that he can just change? What? <laughs> well, it's crazy. For sure. It's always, like, really impressive to me how much more innovative indie developers and solo developers are for that reason. Is that, like, a lot of the really cool... Um, advancements and like accessibility technology and all of that it seemed to always be coming from indie devs and solo devs and that on top of all of the huge like localization hosting it's just mind-blowing to me to me too <laughs> i still don't know how i do it <laughs> well, I, like when i explain what i do to people i'm like wait why do i do so many things <laughs> Uh, I did want to talk a little bit about uh, obviously you you being a fan of video games, being a fan of culture, uh, being obviously kind of funny uh, as well. What 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 drew you into this world in the to begin with? I mean, how, how, where does the your gaming history start? Uh, nineteen ninety four when I was four. I'm old. I'm old. Hey, no, <laughs> like, not actually. We're old, the but... same age because I was nineteen ninety four. I was four as well. And I'm pretty sure I was oh, born with. Okay, the, there you go. I was born with an N64 controller in my hand. I think I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Super Nintendo for me. Like my first game was Super Metroid, which I couldn't beat, and so I traded my cousin for Super Mario All Stars, which was like I think that's the right move. That's I still love problem. Super Metroid, but Mario All Stars, what? That's, that's 
three, maybe four games in one. <laughs> That's the steal at the back of the day. Um, and I've just been playing games ever since that. Like, just I've loved it, loved, loved, loved games. And then I didn't think I could make them because it didn't seem. It seemed like you have to be at Nintendo, at Sony, at EA, whichever company. Because at that time, it was either you're super indie shipping floppy disks or like CDs to people, like actually handing it out as if you're on the streets of New York selling your mixtape. <laughs> or you're making flash games, which I didn't even think about that people actually made those. I don't know why, it just didn't click for me. God. Um, and also, I didn't know what to code, so it didn't make any sense. YouTube wasn't a thing yet, so how was I going to learn? Um, and then... At the end of college, a friend invited me to do like a global game jam, and I was like, "Oh, we can we can actually make games ourselves. What what is this? This, this is cool." <laughs> and there are all these game engines now that makes it super accessible. The the Google Play and um the App Store actually allowing people to just submit games. All of those things just kind of came together to allow me to become a game developer. Um. But yeah, the gaming history itself has been there from birth <laughs> like I have, a, I have a picture i should find i have a picture of me maybe when i was like one or two with a super mario cake i didn't fucking talk it but i had the cake <laughs> i have a similar photo with me and my father uh, where i'm holding the nes controller and i don't know what game i'm playing at that time oh i'm gosh. assuming i'm you're just, assuming you're it's playing kung, a game <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm assuming it was kung fu because i love that game growing up so oh my god the game was that's, I love that game so much. When it showed up in the Super Mario that's Brothers funny. movie, I was like, oh, that's so awesome. It's in the background. <laughs> um, but yeah. Nice. In, in terms <laughs> of, obviously, you're, you're coming from where, uh, you know, growing up with games and then getting into gaming communities. I mean, that's, I believe, how, 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 how do you fall into that? I know how I fell into that, but how did you fall into that? Oh, there he is. Oh, the oh, Mario game. I found it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that Look at me, I'm though. like, I don't know, how, how big am I here? I don't even know. Oh <laughs> like, my god. So funny. That's awesome. You see, I have it on speed up. Google Photos is very easy to find things. I typed in birthday cake and it found it, so it works. <laughs> <laughs> um, sorry, you said how did I get into the gaming, gaming community, communities, then? for instance. Yeah, like, how did you know you found your people? <laughs> the internet? <laughs> 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 like, I was, I was always on IGN, so I was listening to podcasts, and then um, I met who did I meet first? I, mean, I think I met Colin Moriarty and Ryan Clements from IGN back when they were doing like Podcast Beyond. They came yes. to New York for some events and I met them and I was talking to Ryan. I was like, hey, I want to, because back then I did motion graphics. So when I first came to New York, I just only did motion graphics. Um, I was like, hey, I want to work with you guys. I want to do like a, a podcast intro for you. And so I ended up doing Podcast Beyond episode 150, the intro for that. And it was at... Uh, they had like a live event or something. It was sure. it was at there at that that event, um, and then since then I just kept in touch with them, kept doing stuff for uh, Ryan left, and then I forget who. Oh, Andrew Andrew Goldfarb joined, mm -hmm. and so I just kept doing stuff for them. And then when Greg and and Tim and them were leaving, they were like, "Oh hey, can you do some graphics for us?" <laughs> but I didn't I didn't put together that they were leaving. This asked me to do a bunch of graphics. I'm like. This seems like a lot of work for people who have full-time jobs. Yeah. Me being dumb, not realizing that they were leaving to make kind of funny. And so I ended up doing some stuff for them. Um, and then, of course, just being in the community, like, just talking to all those people every day on Twitch. Like, for, I think, about two years, I didn't miss a single day of the live show. It was just so... <laughs> it's in there every day, just, just in it. Um, and yeah, I just man. found my people, just talking, talking about all the fun nerd things, actually playing games. It's, I didn't actually have that in a in a big group. Like I've, I have friends who play games, of course. Like play games that I like, not just Call of Duty or whatever. Because like in Jamaica, it's all about Call of Duty and FIFA. Those are the two big things. Um, but then I, of course I have my friends who play a variety of the nerdiest things you can find. <laughs> <laughs> um, but having that on a large scale, just I guess shout out to IGN because they're the they're the the reason why I've met so many people. And then kind of funny, obviously, like they're, they're the two big, big things for me. Now, how does it feel that all those people are now going to be playing your game? It's dope. <laughs> like it, does, it doesn't feel, it, it's dope. Like just, just, just I, I love seeing people from the community thrive because mm -hmm. it feels like we've all come up together. It doesn't feel like I'm a, some kind of celebrity to me. It just feels like, oh yeah, one of us, you know, like one of us made something. It was so sick seeing, because even some of the the original Gamescast intro, or the second one, I made it with Andy before he joined Kind of Funny, yeah. and then he joined. It's like, oh, sick. 
And then with the Blessing, I remember playing um, at, what was it, Kind of Funny Live 2, I think. He was, we were just in the line together, just ready to play Smash. Um, and then now he's also there. It's just like seeing all these people, seeing Joy join, mm-hmm. um, Roger, like seeing all of them just join is, is, is cool. And then it's also seeing other Kind of Funny best friends just actually making games themselves. It just, it's, it's cool. I don't know. No, it's, it's, it's been fun seeing us all grow up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. and of course places. can't leave you like can't leave all of the people who have made all these really sick podcasts out like there's so many people who have i guess just followed in the footsteps of greg of tim mm-hmm. of everybody and just making cool content now like they've really paved the way and like opened doors for all of us i feel yeah, yeah. no it's nice guess. it's awesome and it's awesome for uh that and for us to obviously pass that on to the next next generation when that happens exactly yeah that, that, that's a big that's a big part of it too just op- the further opening the doors for other people yeah and for me especially like for other jamaicans and other black people like that's i really want that to be a, a thing no that's 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 wonderful that this is a a such a wonderful collaboration but yes it's it's created by you know someone from you know jamaica and having that as being like hey this is a, a monument thing that we were able to accomplish like this is cool i'm really happy that this game uh has a place in the world and that you get to be the one that has Thank the you. name in the front of the game Thank when you. you start the game up that's really cool <laughs> take that aerial knight. i mean i always tell people that i don't I... <laughs> no no i, I, lo- I love neil too neil, neil I is great too. he's great but his games are all actually called like aerial knights never leave. it's not grandma legend super space club and it's just super space club <laughs> But I mean, for better or for worse, like I always tell people, I don't want to be famous, but I want my work to be famous. Like I want to be able to walk on the road peacefully. Like I don't need people to know that I am successful if I do become successful. But if I ask anyone, like, hey, do you know like Pong? I'm, yeah, like I know, you know, Super Mario? Like, yeah, like I made that, you know? <laughs> that, that That's what I want to achieve. Like my work to be known, not me. No, for sure. For sure. When's the Super Space Club, uh, the animation coming out? That's what I want to know, you know? But when I have money, <laughs> <laughs> if someone gave me a budget right now, it would be coming out as soon as the strike is over. Like as soon as I can get good people to work with yes. me, done. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> very well. Um, I think that would be very, very cool. <laughs> that would so be very cool. producers. Sure, call imagine, this, imagine the music for that that animation. Imagine like <laughs> that would be, so be cool. dope. And then the actual, I can see this. Oh, yeah. Man. Okay. Okay. <laughs> So now I saying. wanted to happen for you. <laughs> <laughs> the first I just yeah, I just need the the finances <laughs> and I'm good. <laughs> Very nice. All right. Well, I, well, I don't want to keep you too much longer. So again, I just want to thank you so much for being here. Uh, just get, get letting us uh, speak to you. Sure, for this was fun. Hour. Thanks, thanks again for having me. No, uh, this has, yeah. has been an absolute blast. Um, of course, uh, where can people find you? Where can people find the game? And then uh, we're excited to see where we'll see you next. Yeah, thank you, thank you. You can find me at Gram of Legend on basically everything, I guess. Like <laughs> on X slash Twitter, on <laughs> um, Blue Sky Threads, all the things. On YouTube, youtube.com slash Gram of Legend, I'm making, I'm trying to make game development content and like destroying my journey, kind of kind of opening my journey up to everybody. Um, and you can find Super Space Club at superspaceclub.com. Please go wishlist and or buy it right now. Um, or just you know wait on a sale, but wish list it for sure so that you you, you know it's, when the sales are happening. It's on sale now, isn't it? Isn't it like fourteen ninety nine, but then it's like twelve bucks. No, no, I mean I mean like a, a discounted sale. Uh, okay. okay. Yeah. No, 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 no. Because I politics. I couldn't. I couldn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just say that. <laughs> it right. didn't launch with a sale. No. 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 Yeah. No, no, yeah. No. yeah. Okay. Anyways. <laughs> um. But yeah, and just 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 find me around. Say hi. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, Sly, again, thank you so much for joining us. Can and Hectic Cube is free on my site if you want to go play that too. You can go find that. <laughs> uh, otherwise, just Sly playing it. <laughs> right? Yeah, Sly and one other, I have one friend who still plays it to this day. He loves it. I'm like, oh, you, I have, no, I know I have two, two Hectic Cube fans. Two. It's great. Exactly. <laughs> uh, Sly, where can people find you around the world? You can find me pretty much everywhere on the internet at SlyClonemc, and you can also catch me over at We'll Throw the After Party at After Party SHO on all the socials. 
Yes, yes. And of course, you can always find me here at Point in Progress. And again, this is when our first ever uh, Point in Progress dev talk. And I want to thank Grandma Legend for joining us. This has been a fantastic talk. And uh, until next time. Happy to kick it off. Uh, yeah, thank you. And for that, uh, progress has been made with us. So goodbye, everybody. Thank you.